Mr. Magula, and I'm going to be talking about trophic levels and energy pyramids. So to start out this lecture, it'd be awesome if you guys could scan this QR code with your phones and answer the question on that web page. You're going to click the little plus button in the bottom right corner in order to answer this question, and you can see what some of your classmates have put down on there as well. So is the human diet energy efficient? Why do you think so? Why not? And is your personal diet energy efficient? So after you do that, you can go ahead and unpause this lecture and keep moving forward. We're going to skip this part, but this is for your Khan Academy section. Make sure you watch those videos and do the readings and take some notes. So the first thing you're going to want to do is draw this in your notebook. So I recommend pausing the video and drawing it all out. Make sure you include the sun and the circle on the top right there. So the first level of our energy pyramid are the producers. And our producers are going to be plants. And they're getting all of their energy from the sun. And then, next up, we have consumers. So we have our producers getting their energy from the sun. And then they're passing their energy on up to the consumer. And then we have a relationship between the consumer and the producer. So if the consumer or if the producer is a plant and the consumer is an animal, we have an herbivory as their ecological relationship. And I'm spelling with a mouse, so bear with me. Herbivory with an O. Okay. So then, again, energy going to the plants from the sun, going from the plants to the herbivores or the primary consumers, and then from the herbivores to the carnivores, the secondary consumers. So for examples of these, we could have like grass as a producer, and then deer as a consumer, they're an herbivore that eats grass. And then wolves as a secondary consumer. So again, we're following this energy from the sun down to producers. From producers to consumers, from consumers to secondary consumers and then secondary consumers to tertiary consumers. And these are going to be something like mountain lion, something that's the top of the food chain. It's also known as an apex predator. But then we have one more piece to this energy puzzle. So again, energy from the sun to the producer, producer to consumer, consumer to secondary consumer, secondary consumer to the apex predator, and then when all of these die, we have decomposers who break down any dead organic matter, so any dead living thing, and eat it. Put it back into the soil where the producers can pull that energy out of the ground again. So the decomposers are kind of like the recyclers of organic matter or living things in nature. Now we're going to kind of put some math into this energy pyramid puzzle so that we can understand it in a little bit more depth of like what's actually going on here. So in order to do that, we need to talk about what exactly energy is. So energy is measured in joules or kilocalories. Kilocalories are typically referred to when we're talking about food systems. And joules are typically what we refer to when we're talking about like physics, electricity is more like amperage and stuff, but there's a lot of different measurements for energy, but we'll refer to joules and kilocalories. 
So energy is the ability to do work. So we have this person pushing a box up a hill, doing some work. And work is applying a force over a distance. So we can look at that, and this is kind of physics-y, but like as you're pushing this box, you're applying force on it, and if you move it, then you've done work. If you don't actually move it, you can't really divide by zero. So energy is the ability to move stuff. It's a very simple, more digestible definition right there. So continuing with the energy, sometimes we use energy to move large objects or any object really, just moving items physically. And other times we convert that energy into other forms like chemical energy or heat, like we need to keep our body at a certain temperature to survive. So we use a lot of energy just maintaining that internal body temperature. But eating things transfers energy from one organism to another. So that's how we get our energy. But it is a very inefficient process. So when a lion eats a wildebeest, it's got to hunt it down. It's using energy to catch that wildebeest. And then when it eats the animal, not all of the energy from that wildebeest is converted into energy that the lion can use. Some of it is lost in chemical processes used for survival. And this can be referred to as metabolic rent. So metabolic rent is all of the energy spent staying alive. So for the wildebeest, green is our example here, it spends energy making its bones, growing, growing fur, shedding, changing fur with the wet dry seasons maybe, staying warm, moving around, reproduction, just kind of doing wildebeest things. And only 10% of that is passed on to the next level. And this is referred to as the 10% rule. So as energy travels up the food pyramid, only 10% of the energy in the body of the consumed organism is available for what is eating it. So if a lion eats 2,000 kilocalories of wildebeest, only 200 of those kilocalories are useful for the lion. And the wildebeest needs to consume 20,000 kilocalories of grass to produce 2,000 kilocalories of wildebeest. So here we're going to kind of walk through an example of the energy moving up the pyramid. So we have our producers going to our consumers, consumers to secondary consumers, and then off to tertiary consumers. And we got all of this energy coming from the sun. So let's say the plants, they create 10,000 kilocalories, wow, of energy from the sun, kcals. And then the deer goes on to eat that grass, but the deer only get 10% of that energy. So they're going to get 1,000 kilocalories of energy. And then our wolf eats that deer, and they get 100 kilocalories and then a mountain lion's like, nah, I'm on the top, I'm eating this wolf, and they get 10 kilocalories. So that's pretty energy inefficient. And then we don't know exactly how much these decomposers are going to get, but we know that energy is going to go to these decomposers. They're going to use it up. And then it's going to go back down into the producers. So this is kind of like the math that we're going to do as we move through the trophic levels. And this is the math that you're gonna put on your energy pyramid that you're supposed to make uh, as one of your assignments. 
So for your energy pyramid assignment, we were going to have you decide with a partner which biome you're going to work on. And then you would each make your own energy pyramid. But since we're full distance today, not so much the case. You're welcome to communicate with your classmates and decide on a biome. But each of you have to make your own energy pyramid. And in this energy pyramid, you need two producers from that biome, two consumers that would eat those producers, two secondary consumers, again, that would eat those producers, and one tertiary consumer slash apex predator that also exists in that biome and that would eat your examples. And then two decomposers that also exist in this biome. And then you need to provide examples of energy transfer between those trophic levels. So kind of what I just walked through on that previous slide. Make sure you're showing your math on your energy pyramid. And then you need to include where the energy comes from. Write, write down an answer to this question, where does all of the energy go? And then look up this law of conservation of energy and write down on the bottom or somewhere on your energy pyramid where we can see it, how this law of conservation of energy applies to your food pyramid. If you have any questions, I'll be running office hours all day until 2.45 or 2.30 when school gets out. And you could always email me or Mr. Clapp.